Senator, thank you for taking some time Thanks, today. Dana. Uh, you just said that you believe that the Supreme Court decision was one of the worst in history, but the reality is the Supreme Court has now rebuffed the Bush administration's approach to um, detainees and their rights three times now. Do you think that this is big picture a backlash against what many people thought was their heavy-handed approach from the beginning? Well, I don't know because I think the United States Supreme Court is supposed to act not on their views of the performance of an administration, but on on the most important issues uh, affecting or how to implement best the Constitution of the United States. Uh, I just uh, am convinced uh, that to treat enemy combatants who are not citizens and give them the same rights as a, an American citizen. Remember, 30 of these people have already been released, have uh, tried to uh, attack America again, engaged in activities that this is uh, a decision that will harm our ability uh, to detain and prosecute individuals who are enemy combatants who want to destroy America. And I agree with Judge Justice Rob Chief Justice Roberts by saying that there is no precedent for this kind of action. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, regardless of what you think about the decision, the reality is now there's a legal mess. So, yeah. and it's gonna be in the lap of the next president. Mm -hmm. If you are president, what next? What do you do? I think maybe legislation working with the Congress which would define more narrowly the ha habeas corpus rights of people who we ha have detained. Uh, it's very broad right now, at least try to provide some uh, definition of that so we're not ending up with in endless lawsuits. Already the detainees have have brought suit on diet, on reading material, on all kinds of other things that are certainly not central to uh, what we have detained them for. So, so I would hope that we could uh, at least do that. No, and you've also uh, said that you want to do pretty much on day one of your administration, you want to close Guantanamo Bay and move yes. the detainees to Fort Leavenworth. But in that scenario, would you then afford the the prisoners, the detainees, some action through civilian courts, some habeas corpus rights? First of all, I would declare we will not torture anyone ever again and then say we're closing uh, Guantanamo. What I would say is that we would, I would want to implement the Military Commissions Act, which does give them the right of counsel, which does give them some access, and I would hope we could get the courts to, you know, this decision was not only bad, it left open a number of other issues uh, concerning the, the, uh, the rights or how we adjudicate the cases of detainees. So uh, I still think that they should be moved out of Guantanamo Bay because Guantanamo Bay has become a symbol. And the, yet, at the same time, we've got a lot of work to do to try to move forward with addressing these cases. And if they are able to have endless lawsuits uh, in my view, that would be very damaging, but not as damaging as our requirement to maybe release people who will again, as a few weeks ago, a guy came and be, that was one of the detainees and was a suicide bomber. You say close Guantanamo, Guantanamo because it um, is a stain on America's reputation or image. I think it's a symbol, yes, of, symbol. The, so, of the, so the abuse of the, of the, look, the reason why I was a sponsor of the act that prohibited cruel, inhumane, and degrading treatment was because I was against the torture and mistreatment of prisoners. So I can't defend the Bush administration's interpretation of how they could treat prisoners. That's why we did the Detainee Treatment Act that I was a sponsor of, and then with Lindsey Graham and Joe Lieberman, the Military Commissions Act, to try to more clearly define that. Let me move on to Iraq. You sure. know, as you know, right now in Iraq, um, there are negotiations going on about mm -hmm. the U.S. Mm -hmm. presence there. And Iraqis are trying to say that they believe that, that American troops should be limited to U.S. bases, that, that, uh, that their air cover should be limited as well, limits mm -hmm. pretty much across the board. Mm -hmm. Would you leave U.S. troops there with severe limitations as to what, what they could do? Well, uh, that 
that's not going to happen. The Iraqis are engaged in negotiations with us. I know about those negotiations. They've been going on for a long period of time. Uh, they have, are achieving remarkable success. Maliki is becoming a very strong leader, much to the surprise of, of some, and very pleasant uh, outcome of this. Uh, I, I believe we will reach a status of forces agreement with the Iraqis. It's a give and take. It's a negotiation. And I'm confident that we'll be able to arrive at an arrangement that, success, that is in the best interests of Iraqi and Americans. What's your biggest concern? If you were president right now, what would you say is your biggest concern about what needs to be done for U.S. troops there in terms of their, the limitations on what they can do and, and to really do achieve the, the goal that you say is so imperative, which is uh, to stay as long as it takes to find stability? Well, we are succeeding. We are winning. Uh, the three major cities uh, are now under Iraqi military and government control with our support. Senator Obama incredibly refuses to acknowledge this success. It's remarkable. Maybe he should sit down with General Petraeus, which he has not sought the opportunity to do uh, so far, or maybe even go back to Iraq, which he has not since the surge began. We are succeeding. And uh, that success means we will be able to withdraw over time gauged by conditions on the well, ground. The and we will come home in victory do. and honor and not in defeat. That's what this choice is going to be about in this election. I said a year ago, over a year ago, I'd rather lose a campaign than lose a war. I was right about the surge. Senator Obama was wrong about the surge. American people will make an appropriate judgment. Go ahead, I'm sorry. No, just very briefly, yeah. what, but what if, the reality is this is a negotiation and, and, and there is a sovereign government there. Briefly, what if the, the Iraqis limit the, what the military, U.S. military can do in a way that you can achieve what you want to but achieve. But that won't happen. We will reach an arrangement with the uh, Iraqi government that I'm sure is satisfactory. We are in negotiations. They are, they are a sovereign nation, and I'm confident we will reach an agreement. may not be everything that we want, but it certainly will be in what, and I'm confident they'll reach that arrangement because it's in the best interest of both Iraqis and Americans. On the economy, you said this week that oil companies 